there, everybody. I'm Mike Delisio. I'm Roy Kenne. I'm Chris Yee. And today we're going to be taking a look at a small box game from Oink Games, a mm. Japanese publisher called Town 66. Is there a big game packed into this little box? No. Well, all right. But I'm going to show you a little bit more to give you some context. So we'll head over to the table. I'll give you a very brief overview on how the game plays, and we'll come back here and let you know what we think. Okay, here we see a setup for Town 66. Uh, first thing I want to point out is that the game is made up of, the components anyway, are made up of 36 of these house tiles. And here we see each of the six colors represented and each of the six shapes. So there are 36 total tiles that you have in the game. I'm going to go ahead and pop these back in the bag. Every player is going to start with four tiles on their little card uh, tray. And then we have one random tile that makes up the beginning tile, and this will be the top left of an eventual grid that could build out to 36, six by six. One thing to point out is that the way the game is structured is so that you can obviously see your own tiles, and for the other players, you can see what color tiles they have, but you don't know the shape, all right? So you can always tell what color tiles the other players have, but you don't know the shape of those tiles. All right, it's a very simple game. On your turn, what you're gonna do is you're gonna check if you can exchange any tiles. And so I kind of seeded this so you can see a particular example of that. Here, you see I have three of the same color. If you ever have three of the same color or shape, you have the option, you're not required to, but you have the option to exchange those tiles by placing them back in the bag and then drawing uh, more out. Again, that is not uh, necessary, but if you want to, you can. If you have four tiles that are the same, you can exchange three of them. So let's say I did want to do that. I go ahead and take these tiles, I place them back in the bag, I redraw another three tiles, and then I go ahead and take my turn. So on your turn, what you're gonna do is you are going to then place a tile after you've uh, seen if you can exchange or want to exchange. You place a tile. The rules are very simple. They have to be touching orthogonally uh, any other tile on the board, and you cannot have the same shape or the same color in each row or column. So right now, every one of these tiles are fine for me to place because I don't have a purple tile here, and I don't have kind of that mountain-shaped tile here. So maybe I want to go ahead and place this blue house tile right here. Again, this was the top left tile of the grid, so I could not have gone to the left or above it. I had to go either below or to the right. Now, at this point, once I have placed my tile, uh, what I'm going to do is replenish a tile from the bag. So I go ahead and do that, and now I have a decision to make. At this point, I can decide if I want to discard one tile from my, uh, from my hand. If I do that, I'm permanently shrinking the number of tiles that I'm going to have in front of me for the rest of the game. So if I wanted to get rid of one of these right now, then I would have three that I'm doing instead of four. It's probably a little early in the game for me to do that, but that is kind of one of the big strategic decisions in the game is when to discard your tiles so that you eventually whittle yourself down as the options to you become more limited on the board. So once you've made that decision whether you're going to discard or not, you would then pass the bag to the next player clockwise and they would go ahead and take their turn. Every player is going to continue going through this process until they can't place any more of their tiles or they have placed all their tiles. At that point, they are kind of out of the game until the other players are out of the game as well. Once all the players either can't place any more tiles or they have placed all their tiles, then the game is going to end. The way that the winner is going to be determined is going to be whoever has played all of their tiles or played the last tile is going to be the winner. So if everybody had played all of their tiles, the last player to place a tile would be the winner. If some players still had tiles in their hand, whoever had the least amount. So if everybody except for one player had one tile left in their, in their hand and let one player had played all of their tiles, they would be the winner. So that's kind of the priority on how the winner is decided. That is Town 66. Let's go back and tell you what we think. All right, well, that was Town 66 in a nutshell, and mm. uh, that's the only way you can talk about this game, because it is a very small game, as you alluded to. It's quite yes, tight. Yes, you, I, I did no illusion. You, I straight up... 
You did. Revealed the truth to the world. You did. Mm. First thing I want to do is I think I want to talk about the theme. There isn't any. Okay, so... Um, you didn't feel like building a real city? Like, it was very important, you know? No. I kept... uh, listen, if you're going to try to build a house beside my house, it better not have the same shape roof. That's right. all I got to say. Yeah, if I've, or got color. A, if I've got a Black Eyed Peas, my humps looking a little, you know, uh, town <laughs> building, I don't want another one of those. You got to do like the single big thing or maybe the reverse U. It's very thematic. I guess what we're getting at here is that this game is not uh, leaning forward with its theme. Okay, mm. this is a tile laying game, and um, Oink Games is, uh, as I mentioned, a Japanese publisher, and they really have kind of broken through mm. into the wider market. I mean, you can find their games in Barnes and Noble stores in the United States and Target stores. So they have kind of broken out of the the smaller niche that mm -hmm. they had begun with, um, but not all of their games hit. What do we? Uh, what, give me some general thoughts on on the game as the mechanics go. What do you think about this game? I mean, I enjoy it. I mean, it's one of those really small footprint games. I mean, that's the point of these games is that they're yeah. not supposed to take up a big space in your collection. Not supposed to take up a big space on your shelf. You can throw it in a backpack and pull it out with anybody. I do think it's cute that they have the little stand for the tiles. I mean, yeah. it's not even something that's necessarily necessary, but it just makes it easy to play because you can see all your things out there as everything's done and it was surprising I didn't think there was gonna be much to this game mm -hmm. but I actually enjoyed it a little bit more than I thought and the turning point of when to uh, kind of get rid of tiles and when to press your luck and not was actually a very interesting decision yeah it's a cool mix of push your luck tile game with elimination yeah mm -hmm. you know if you put those three though you put those three words together and I think I have no idea if I like that but mm -hmm. I really did and, and to your point the production I think it's really elegant feeling. Mm -hmm. Sometimes these little oink games, they fit that that box, and they say, "Now just throw everything in the box and <laughs> you know it, cram it in there." Right. Mm -hmm. This one, everything about it feels elegant. The gameplay, the little production, the little wood thing, you know, mm -hmm. just. I'm I'm impressed with with what's in there. Yeah, and the tile stands actually are functional because yeah, one of sure. the one of the little hooks to the game is that you can see the colors of tiles that your right. opponents have, but you don't know what shape they are. And I mentioned that word hook because when I think of Oink games, I've played a number of them now. Um, I like to think of them as they're almost all very very small games, not just in size, but in kind of what they're Stole. trying to do. They right. usually have one hook. And the key to whether I like an oink game is, do I like the hook or not? Mm -hmm. And in this game, the hook to me is that timing. Right. Um, you know, when am I going to start discarding tiles and have a smaller... Um, there's a little bit of a game of chicken going on mm -hmm. with the other players at the table, and player count can affect that a little bit. Um, it definitely, with two players, feels like a game of chicken, um, mm -hmm. even more so than with, with more. But I do like the hook in this. I feel like just that timing decision is enough in a game that takes 15 minutes, right? Yes. This is very much a filler game. Most of their uh, of this publisher's games, I think, would fit in that category oh, of sure. a filler game. Um, some more than others, but this definitely does. And the hook kind of uh, works for me here. Um, any, this is a small game, it's gonna be a small review. Any final uh, things you wanted to talk about before, or do you wanna just get to those final scores? I'll start with my final scores okay. and, and kind of I have one other thought in that. So I'm going to give this game a 7.5. Mm -hmm. It's really fun. It has a neat, it, it doesn't have just one neat hook, mm. right? You said the reverse tiles, you see yeah. what the color is but not mm. the shape. That's a neat little hook. The idea that people have called this uh, elimination quirkle because yeah. you can't match things in rows and columns. That's another good little hook. And then that timing issue of when do I kind of mm. bow out? Mm -hmm. We played a game where you bowed out about two turns into the game, <laughs> and then Roy and I just went at it for a while. Yeah. And you won. I won. Yeah. I sat back and crazy. laughed and laughed. Yeah. But it wasn't a boring experience for you still, right? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Because again, the game is short, right. and I was invested. You know, yeah. I was invested in how long are they going to go. Like, keep going, guys. Keep and, going. And to keep be going. clear, you know, I, I don't. I want to make this. I don't want to make it seem like I had a brilliant strategy. My purpose going into that game was I want to go out early and see how this works. Mm. Yeah, but you can if yeah. people kind of get into a, a, a cold war with each other. Mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> right. So I think it's fun. Elegant. It fits its footprint nicely. It's a 7.5 for me. I like it. All right. um, for me, it is going to be a 7. I really enjoy the game. I mean, I think it's something that you could like throw in a backpack or play wherever. I mean, it's not going to have a whole lot of staying power, but it was cute for what it is. And yeah. I just, I really enjoy that decision of like, let's go further, let's go further, let's go further until you're like, Ugh. 
I, this is really tight. I really do not know if I'm going to be able to place this. And the fact that you're switching out tiles too can like yes. you can have a teeny bit of like luck situation pulling in there, which mm -hmm. makes it exciting. Um, I enjoyed enjoyed it. So seven for me. And I'm coming in at a seven too, Roy. And it doesn't surprise me if there wasn't a huge variation mm. because again, this is a small game and it's going to be. Does the hook work for you or not? Right. And I think it sounds like it works for us all relatively similarly. Mm -hmm. It's a, a really quick game. I do feel like that decision, that timing decision, and the, the you know being able to see the colors is enough mm -hmm. to keep me coming back for a while. I agree. The reason why it's not rated higher is I don't know if this is something that's going to be an evergreen. I don't right. know if I'll oh, be playing sure. this over and over and over again. And I also would be remiss if I didn't mention that this is one of the few Oint games that you can play sol solo, and oh. I've done that a little bit too, so that's oh, also good. a nice little thing to kind of add into the mix there if you are a solo gamer. So what this game feels like to me is more like the game that you say, hey, I want to show this to lots of different people. Yes. Right. Right. Rather than say, hey, let's the three of us keep playing it. Mm. I, that's a yeah. that's a good point. Yeah. I don't think that there's it's not like a game that you're gonna develop a meta too much. <laughs> right. Um other than other than, you know, like I know if Tom, if I'm playing with Tom, he's not gonna bow out early. Mm. He's gonna yeah. want to push his luck, you know. So there's right. a little bit of that. Uh, also, Tom will likely never play this game. <laughs> All right. Well, that is Town 66. Until next time, I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Roy Kenning. I'm Chris Yee. Have fun laying tiles and bowing out at the right time. Do that not put a pink building next to my pink building. I don't mm. think there is any pink buildings. No pink buildings. I'm out. <laughs> 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 <laughs>